David Payne. All right, so I studied sociology. I graduated from college back in 2015, and one of the main reasons why I studied sociology because when I graduated from high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Everyone was raving about psychology and mental health, how important it is to understand it and really be empathetic towards people who may or may not be going through something. So I said, okay, this area of study kind of fascinates me. What can I do with it? So. Once I got to community college, I majored in mental health. And once I got to undergrad, I said, I wanna continue studying mental health, but I don't wanna be a therapist necessarily or sit down with someone and listen to their problems. So I decided to study sociology. And I chose sociology because after getting, after getting feedback from family and friends, most of the people said, hey, follow your passion. That was very outdated advice that was given to me in Probably one of the biggest reasons why I chose sociology because I wanted to find a way to help people and give back When you're helping people and giving back it's very Unspecific and you can do it in a number of different ways, but that's not important The reason you're here today is because I'm going to share with you five reasons why you should not Study a social science and this is solely based on my ex experience There's no empirical evidence. There might be some data to back this up but for the most part if you're studying sociology and you want to make a living and you want to have a family and you want to do all these different career options you see yourself really improving and making some money then you should probably stay and listen to this video so to my first point sociology liberal arts the area of humanity is a very outdated form of education when i was studying an undergrad at howard university there were these rumors floating around that our university our institution was considering no longer funding anthropology and sociology, which was a merger between the two departments. And what ended up happening is they cut funding to the anthropology department. And I was like, wow, like these guys are total jerks. Why would they do that? But now looking back, I totally understand it. Sociology, psychology, a lot of forms, a lot of different forms of liberal arts are definitely outdated. And a lot of it is based on theory from going back to the 1970s to the 1980s to the early 1990s, which is great. I think when you look at people like Philip Zimbardo, Sigmund Freud, a lot of these prominent psychologists have definitely paved the way for education today. But looking back, a lot of what we were learning, a lot of the teachings, more specific to sociology, is solely based on structuralism, functionalism, all these different isms that they sound great in theory, but for the most part, they definitely can't give you something that you can put under your belt. And that, I'll say this, a lot of the courses I took were very interesting. I learned about social stratification. I learned about political sociology, race and ethnicity. But if you're paying 35 to 40 grand for an education, and this is something you can learn on YouTube, why pay for it? To my second point, advisors. Um, this is a very big one, a very important one, because during the duration of the four years, there wasn't necessarily career coaching or advisors telling you what your marketability is, where you're going to be looking at once you graduate. And there wasn't really any areas where I felt like, hey, like I'll be I'll be in good hands once I'm done. And when I when I did some reflecting and looking back, probably around by my junior to senior year, when I was seriously considering 
what can I do with sociology as a career? I started seeing flyers popping up left and right for a school of business students and graduates to speak to different recruiters from all these Fortune 500 companies that they had partnerships with. They had partnerships with all these companies to directly recruit students who graduated immediately. So job placement was not an issue for school of business students and job placement was certainly not an issue for STEM majors. I had a friend who I met in my in my junior year of college. Um, she had the opportunity to intern at Google. I don't know what she was doing exactly, but it was at MIT, it was an internship and she got paid $7,000 to stay on campus for like two, three months. So that should speak volumes in itself. And one thing that certainly stood out to me that I then realized today is that most departments don't, who don't have partnerships with different organizations or corporations for job placement, you should definitely stay away. Number three, this is an extension of what I just referenced in regards to recruiting. What does a job market look like? Now, when I chose sociology as a major, I didn't necessarily go in thinking, hey, I'll be fine, I'll have a job right away. I said I wanted to do something that felt more fulfilling and something that felt a little bit more altruistic. So when I studied sociology, I then realized that there isn't a huge market for people who are studying liberal arts or the field of humanities. And most of the, most of the jobs that are readily available, entry level salary is 30 grand, maybe 35 grand starting. Now, as you can imagine, bi-weekly after taxes, I mean, you're making no more than maybe 17, 18 grand a year. You're probably looking at anywhere between 700 to $900 bi-weekly. And that's working 40 to 50 hours a week. When you're working for a nonprofit, you're working for some kind of organization where it's doing they're doing a lot of community outreach, just the dollars just simply aren't there. And that form of altruism is great, but in retrospect, if you're looking to take care of yourself, start a family, it's unrealistic. And lastly, to my final point, one thing I realized after interviewing and working in nonprofit, a lot of those people who are well-established into the career, who've been working in nonprofit for 20 to 30 years, they're making anywhere between 60, maybe 50 to 60 grand, and that's after being there for a very long time. So the room for growth once you graduate as a sociology major is very small, unfortunately. To my fourth point, this is an extension of the job market and pretty much an extension of the what your advisors will tell you. One thing I realized is that once you study sociology, if you're trying to find a way to make yourself more marketable, you have to A, either go through a career chain or B, get more education. Because un it's unrealistic to think that as a sociology major or someone who has a bachelor's in sociology or psychology, philosophy, you can't just sit can't sit there and expect yourself to earn anywhere between sixty to seventy thousand dollars. It's just unrealistic. Unless you get very lucky, you know someone who knows somebody, then yes, you may actually be able to make a living. And to my fifth and final point, I will say this: one thing you have to take a very. And to my fifth and final point, I have to stress this. A lot and I really feel like I can't emphasize this enough with people who are studying liberal arts they have this desire this idea that they're gonna make it whatever they're gonna do they're just gonna make it and when you have a tendency to just believe that your altruism is just gonna pay off um, that's just a recipe for failure I've listened to Dave Ramsey's podcast or his YouTube channel for ages now and I kind of get there's like this underlying theme with the type of people who call in and people who are calling in are mostly people who studied liberal arts, they're studying philosophy, they're studying psychology, sociology, and they have $80,000 in student loan debt. And this, just, and this just isn't from undergrad, this is them continuing their education and, their, and then struggling to find a way to pay back their student loans because they're getting 50 grand with a master's degree. So if you're gonna do anything the best advice I can give to you is to focus on technical skills and figure out how you're going to market it because the job market is forever changing. And you need more certifications under your belt in order to give employers a reason to pay you more money. Because when you study sociology and we study liberal arts, you're not really gaining a technical skill. 
we say, hey, I have critical skills, critical thinking skills, but I mean, who doesn't have critical thinking skills, right? You can't prove that on paper. So if you're gonna go into a social science, make sure you have a plan to gain a skill, a technical skill to where you walk out of there, you know for a fact that you're gonna be making 60 grand, 70 grand, and you're gonna be able to pay back your student loan debt. Because if that wasn't the case, the way that the way the United States is, the way the job market is, and the economy, it's very unforgiving. And if you do not have something that gives you a leg up, you will be left behind. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, a share, a thumbs up. Share it with anyone who is graduating or is on the job market right now looking for something to do.